So how much does it really cost to live in Durham, North Carolina? Bestplaces.net gives Durham an overall score of 95, which is below the national average. But is that really accurate? In today's video, I'm going to break it all down for you and tell you what it's really like to live in Durham, North Carolina. And it's coming up next. Hey, this is Will Walford, real estate broker with Berkshire Hathaway in Raleigh, North Carolina. And today we're going to talk about the cost of living or what it takes to live comfortably in Durham, North Carolina, which by the way, is one of the three cities or towns along with Chapel Hill and Raleigh that make up the Research Triangle area. And of course, Durham is home to Duke University. So let's start with the median income for a Durham resident, which is a little tough to decipher because the Bureau of Labor Statistics combines Durham and Chapel Hill together into the Durham Chapel Hill metro area and the median income for that area is 64,300. Now I will tell you there are a lot of people moving into the area to work at the RTP and those jobs are generally going to pay much more than the median income of 64,300. Now if you google the cost of living in Durham or watch a few videos about this topic you'll find most of the content says Durham costs less than Raleigh but is that really the case? I think we can all agree that housing is going to be the largest cost in our cost of living breakdown. So let's start there. Based on a median income of 64,300, a single person moving to Durham and renting an apartment could afford to spend around 16,10 a month on rent, assuming you cap your rental budget at around 30% of your annual gross income, just to be safe. And I think that's reasonable. But let me know in the comments what you think a reasonable cost for rent is or what the median cost for rent is where you live. I'm always curious. So just how much does an apartment in Durham cost? To find out the latest apartment statistics in Durham, you need to check out the updated research on zumper.com. I'll put links to all the sites I mentioned below. But when you research Durham on Zumper, which by the way is updated daily, you'll see the average rental price for a one bedroom or studio apartment in Durham is currently $1,258 a month. A two bedroom is $1,450. A three bedroom is $1,750. And a four bedroom is $2,100. And probably one of the best things about Zumper is you can see the various neighborhoods in Durham where that particular size apartment you're interested in is located. And that helps to give you a real sense of what it's actually going to cost you to live where you want to be. And based on the current size of the available apartment pool and type one, two, three, or four bedroom apartment, I would say the Durham apartment composition in Durham looks something like this. Out of the 171 apartments that are currently available, 31% are studio or one bedroom, 41.5% are two bedrooms, 22.8% are three bedrooms, and only 4.7% are four bedrooms or larger. So apartments in Durham are cheaper than Raleigh, but they're still pretty expensive. And the rental price have been rising almost in sync with home prices. Now, if you're married or have roommates, this may actually be more affordable assuming everyone is working, but we know how important it is for everyone to have their own room. And it's not gonna be so easy to find an apartment if you need three or more bedrooms. So I think a couple with two kids would be okay in a three bedroom apartment, but any larger, and you'd probably need to buy a house or find a rental home. And the average price for a rental home in Durham is about $2,200, give or take 500. And currently there are 190 homes listed on Zillow for rent. And the prices range from 1250 to 5,000. I will tell you there is one, only one home at the 5,000 price point, And the next stop down is 3,800. So that top price and 3,500 beyond not a whole lot of houses for rent right there, but 2,200 seems to be about the median price, give or take 500 either way. Now, depending upon where you live in the country, these prices could actually be low in comparison, but in the last 12 months, and my data is of 12, 21, so less than a month behind, prices for rental apartments were up about 21% year over year. Now, I'll tell you, rental houses won't fluctuate quite as much and are somewhat dependent on the property's location, condition, and loan amount, if any. All right, now let's talk about the housing market in Durham, North Carolina, if you prefer to own than rent. The median price for a home in Durham, North Carolina is just under 400,000 at 398,818. And in the larger county of Durham, the median price for a home is 
400,000. So Durham currently has a higher median price than Raleigh's 389,000 median price, and Durham was up 33.4% in the last year. Now I wanna point out, the median price I gave you was for all property types. So that includes single family townhomes and condos. So if you break the median cost down, it looks like this. A single family home in Durham is currently 420,000, and Raleigh is 437,500. A townhome in Durham is currently 388,000, and in Raleigh it's 320. 20, a condo in Durham is 214,000, while in Raleigh it's 260,000. So housing is going to be the largest factor to consider when you're trying to get a feel for what your cost of living is for a particular area. And in this case, we're talking about Durham and the surrounding Raleigh-Durham area. Next up, let's talk about gasoline. So as I'm filming this in January of 2022, prices have increased dramatically for gas since the beginning of the year from around 223 to 314 or about a 41% increase. And while this is lower than the national average, it is more expensive than some of our neighboring southern states because North Carolina has a higher gas tax. So this higher cost of filling up your tank is gonna factor into your monthly expenses as well as your cost of living for a lot of the rest of these categories that we're about to go over. But I'll tell you, what I've been doing to save 25 to 35 cents a gallon, I've been going to Costco to get my gas, and it seems to save me around six to ten dollars every time I fill up. Okay, for the next areas I'll cover, I'm getting my numbers from bestplaces.net. And again, I'll include links to all these statistical sites in the description if you wanna play around with the different areas of the country. So when bestplaces.net has a reading of 100, it means you're on par with the rest of the nation. And if you're above 100, the cost will be higher or more expensive. And likewise, when, you're, when the result falls below 100, the cost will be lower or cheaper for the category that we're discussing. All right, next up, let's talk about the cost of groceries. Now, there are a lot of different grocery chains in our area. So that allows you to benefit as a Durham resident because they're going to be somewhat competitive to help keep prices down. But you will see a big difference in grocery prices depending upon where you shop. So if you go to a low profile budget grocer like Aldi or King's Red and White or Food Line, your prices are generally going to be much different than some of the more upscale places like Whole Foods, Fresh Market or Sprouts. So bestplaces.net gives Durham an overall score of 99.2 in groceries, which is pretty comparable to the 100 score for the nation, but it's more expensive than North Carolina as a whole, which gets a score of 96, which comes in lower than the national average. And it's likely because North Carolina grows a lot of fruits, vegetables, pork, and chicken. But the seafood from our coast is pretty hard to find in the grocery stores in Raleigh or Durham because the majority of what we're harvesting on the coast is being shipped out of state or in some cases, out of the country. Next up, let's talk about the cost of healthcare because that can certainly be a major cost when you incorporate your cost for insurance. In fact, healthcare can easily be as high as your rental budget because North Carolina doesn't actually have enough carriers on the platform to make it competitive. So what do I mean by that? If your spouse is offered health care by their employer, then you won't qualify for the subsidized health insurance or Obamacare insurance on the North Carolina health insurance platform. So you can buy insurance on the health care portal, but it's really going to cost you. For instance, if I got decent insurance for my daughter and I, and I went through the portal, by the way, neither of us has any previous conditions, thankfully, knock on wood. I found that I had a choice of plans between $700 and $1,300 a month. Now, the plan that was $700 didn't really have a whole lot on it, I can tell you. And there weren't like other plans that were priced around that. So it pretty much jumped up to around $1,000 after that. Depending upon how strong a policy I wanted and the size of the deductible. But here's the catch. Your out-of-pocket maximum is still going to be a ton of money for a whole lot of potential liability. And it's a lot more than all the cost of living sites tell you it's going to be for sure. Thankfully, there are healthcare brokers that sell healthcare policies outside of the platform. And I ended up with a good plan for less than $500 a month with a maximum out-of-pocket of, of $5,000, and that's for both of us. 
And I'm just telling you this because I think it said for a single person, healthcare would be around $2,500 and for a family, $7,000. I think in 2018, I easily paid over $13,000 just for me and my daughter. And like I said, we don't have any prior health conditions. So that was all money that I just paid into insurance, never saw any results. I had protection, but I gained nothing out of that. So that was money down the drain, in my opinion. So I'm telling you the healthcare prices people are writing about on the blogs and so on, are for people that qualify for the subsidized insurance or they're very young in age. If you have to buy your own insurance because you didn't qualify for the subsidized insurance, you really need to shop around outside the North Carolina healthcare platform if you want a solid plan at an affordable price. But despite the cost of insurance, bestplaces.net gives Durham an overall score of 92.1 for healthcare, which is lower than the entire state of North Carolina, which gets an overall score of 107.3 for healthcare. So people in Durham are actually paying significantly less for their healthcare than people in North Carolina are as a whole. And I can only imagine that that would be attributed to the fact that there's some major teaching hospitals in our area and the three universities that are affiliated with them are UNC Duke and ECU. So they're pretty major. Next, let's take a look at taxes. The sales tax in Durham, North Carolina is currently 7.5% and the income tax for the state of North Carolina is 5.25% and that is a flat rate tax. Now property taxes in Durham County and of course Durham is located in Durham County are 0.7222 of a percent of total assessed value in Durham County. And property taxes in the city of Durham are taxed an additional 0.5517 of a percent of assessed value. So Durham homeowners pay a combined total of 1.2739 for every 100 of your property's assessed value. So a home with a 500,000 assessed value would have an annual property tax of $63.69.50, so $6,369.50. To that figure, you're gonna to need to add your homeowner's policy, your property insurance. Typically, people put that in escrow and pay that amount monthly. Next up, let's talk about utilities. Bestplaces.net gives Durham a total score of 100.1 for utilities, which is fairly comparable to the 100 score or on par with the national average. So for a homeowner, your typical utilities on say a 2,000 square foot home will be about 250 per month, which includes water and sewer, electricity and gas. And I would say the average cost for cellular service for a single person is gonna be about $90 and internet is around 60. And for cable TV, I use internet TV or Hulu with Netflix. And I think I pay about $80 per month for that. So factor in 80 bucks for cable. Next up, is transportation. Bestplaces.net gives Durham a score of 84.1 for transportation, which is quite a bit less than the 100 score for the rest of the country. Keep in mind that in Durham, the vast majority of people use cars as a way to get around because everything is really spread out and our public transportation system isn't very good. But in all honesty, how could it be when everything is so spread out? So remember, it's really only gonna be the major cities in the country where you can get by without a car. These are the cities with metro, trains, and buses that allow you to connect seamlessly. So I'll tell you, I'm a Raleigh native and I love North Carolina, but you really can't take advantage of all the great things North Carolina has to offer without a car. If you have any questions, please feel free to give me a call, shoot me a text, or send me an email. And if you enjoyed the video, please be sure to smash that like button. I'd appreciate it and subscribe to the channel if you'd like to learn more about the Raleigh-Durham area, and I'll see you on the next one.